I didn't really think I had a, a urge to kill her. I just wanted her to stop. And um... in this video, we are going to watch a segment about Gary Ridgway, more famously known as the Green River Killer. Ridgway was one of the most prolific serial killers in the United States with 49 confirmed murders. This number may be higher as Ridgway eventually confessed to 71 murders. During the 80s and 90s, the U.S. was gripped by a shocking string of deaths centered in the state of Washington. Women and girls as young as 14 were disappearing. Their strangled bodies would later be discovered, often in the area of the Green River. Anxiety and fear ran high, and the question on everyone's mind was, who could do this and why? What did you want to do to her? What did I want to do to her? Uh, just to have her stop and... Uh, but how would you do it? What did you think in your head about how you would do it? That's, that's what we're trying to get at. When did you first think about treating your mom violently to get what you wanted her to do? Probably in fourth grade. Okay, there we go. Fourth? Fourth, fourth, fifth and sixth was probably up to that grade. And, and what, what was in your mind that you wanted to do to get her to treat you a certain way? What did you want to do to your mom here? Uh, I wanted her to um, stop um, being angry at me for not knowing how to... Uh, but she wasn't stopping. No, she wasn't stopping. Was she? No. She kept picking at you, picking. belittling you, mm -hmm. embarrassing you. I mean, that was pretty clear from yesterday. Mm -hmm. Many serial killers show signs of aggression during their childhood. This is enhanced when abuse by a parent occurs. It's normal to have flashes of anger, and most children have wanted to hit someone at some point. However, these feelings are typically short-lived and aren't dwelled on obsessively. It happened in school too, so I had... So what, did, what was your way of retaliating against her in your mind? What, what were you thinking to do to your mom? Um, I don't know if I was thinking of uh, hurting her. I just wanted her to stop and uh, let, me, let me alone. Um, angry at uh, her for uh, pushing and pushing and pushing on me to to remember and I just couldn't remember and I just wanted her to stop. Uh, but she didn't. But she didn't know. She didn't stop. So somewhere in the fourth or fifth grade that sense of helplessness that you had not get, being able to get her to stop mm -hmm would very likely have pr to produce thoughts of taking back some power and control over your mom to get the bitch to shut up. I mean, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but Gary, that's what we hear. And that's mm -hmm. what one of the things we're looking to get a better understanding of. During, during that thing, I usually took it out on uh, 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 other things instead of hurting her, uh, uh, um, living things, living things, killing, killing animals. Okay. Killing animals. Um, I stabbed a kid one time. Okay. Just stabbed a kid with a knife. Tell me about that. Um, down by uh, Chinook where I used to go to school and um, the boy was playing, I stabbed him inside and I didn't kill him and um, I, I think it must have been about Sixth grade, I think it was uh, seventh grade, and I, I uh, that was 
times. And sometimes, you know, breaking out windows, throwing throwing rocks at windows. At school, Not interested but, in that. But that's what I took my aggression on. I couldn't take it on my mom. I had to take it on my animals and How many and animals kids. did you kill? Oh, I, I killed a lot of birds, but uh, one cat suffocated in an uh, ice chest. Mm -hmm. Shot uh, babies at uh, dogs yeah. and to hurt them, and um, threw, uh, well, I threw rocks at my brother about that time. I think I was getting out of that, though. You couldn't take your aggression down on your mom. No, I couldn't. But you could think about it. I could think about it, and. and What'd you think? I thought of about hurting her uh, so she sh shut up and uh, leave me alone and then how did you think about hurting your mom killing her and how would you do that I thought, uh, with my hands or uh, I didn't have no guns or anything or so I didn't it had to been uh, hands or a uh, uh, and then after she was dead, what were you going to do in your head? In my head, I, uh, I don't know what I would do. I just, just, um, just wanted her to stop. She, one time there, they were going to put me in a, a, a special school. I didn't want that. My dad and my mom were arguing about it all the time. And it was. Uh, for retarded people, and I didn't, wasn't retarded, I think. So I was mad at them for wanting to put me away from other kids. And wanting to hurt her. And uh, I uh, hurt her bad. What does that mean? Hurt her bad. Help me to understand that. Just uh, be drip so she wouldn't leave me alone. And how would you do that in your head? My hands. Be, be drip with my hands. Uh, maybe use a knife. What would you do with the knife? I'd probably stab her with it. Um, she was. Um, big problem I had. I mean, I, there's, um, my dad wasn't around that much. He was working all the time and she was the only one that was in control and she was constantly trying to get me to uh, do better in school and, and I, I just couldn't do better. I wanted to have her stop and the only way was to, to kill her, to hurt her bad. Help me explain, help me understand the knife. Well, the knives are in the drawer. That would be, I use a knife on that, stab that boy, and I'd use, use a knife on her if I wanted to. It's a, a way of killing. And, and Ridgeway shows no emotion while speaking of his violent actions, not even about his mother even though speaking about her should trigger some level of anger. It's almost if he has separated himself from his emotions and is speaking as a distant observer. Okay, so walk me through what you were going to do with the knife in your head to your mother. Uh, cut her throat. So she wouldn't... wouldn't uh, Stop uh, 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 degrading me and uh, and putting me in. Uh, uh, I, I I couldn't remember things, and that was the only way I could think of hurting her to get her to stop. 
When, when did you think about having sex with your mother? When? Um, 14 or 15, I think. Tell me about that. It's about the same time frame. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd, I'd see her out uh, sunbathing and uh, I feel that she, you know, to be good to have have sex with, and, but she she's my mother, and I never, you know, never, uh, never really. She's the only woman in in my life. I didn't, you know, neighbor to one girls, but uh, so to, uh, she, I get uh, fantasies of having sex with her and and uh, wanting wanting to, but. And, being restricted on that part. Explain to me fantasies and restricted on that part. Your well, words. because if she's my mother, it's not right for having sex with your mother. And, and she was, she was always in in, in uh, two pieces, and and, uh, and she come off work, she'd go in the backyard. So it was is inviting to fantasize with her because she was there sunbathing and tan and uh, it was it was a uh, something that really uh, intrigued me it is possible that his sexual feelings towards his mother stemmed from a desire to dominate and humiliate her since he saw her as a controlling figure this in his mind would have shifted the power in their relationship it's all women like this uh, I, uh, they're they're different, and they're uh, it, it rouse me to. Uh, I get a, a hard on sometimes, mm -hmm. and it was it was the only time I had an opposite sex in class. Everybody's clothes and stuff like that. This was a woman that was sometimes uh, you know laying down with no no bra on. I mean you couldn't see anything, but. Bare skin and uh, it was a it was a it was a turn on in a way, and I enjoyed looking out the window at her when she wasn't watching. Did your mom enjoy that? She didn't even know I was there. No, she, she was down just doing just sunbathing, and then she'd turn over and. Before she turned over, she always fastened her bra and uh, turned over, and maybe a little bit of hair to show because she t no tan marks. And I, uh, I, st I stared and looked out all the time. And had your fantasies? I had a fantasy, yes. It makes sense to me. Makes mm -hmm. sense that you would have a fantasy. Mm -hmm. Have you tell me what that what that was? Just a fantasy of wanting to uh, have sex, t touch her, feel her body, um, have her show me how to have sex. Because um, mothers teach you a lot of things, you know. It's just it's just a fantasy. Something she wouldn't do it, but it's. What would in your fantasy? What would your mom have you do to her? Have me do to her. Uh, my fantasy would be to uh, and explore, to uh, find the different things what a woman has, uh, uh, girls have that guys don't have. Show me how to have sex, good sex. Uh, what, you know, what, what the woman wants and uh, feel every bit of her body to to uh, enjoy a, a, a woman and have sex with her. But at the same time in your life, and listen carefully to this, mm -hmm. um, at the same time in your life, you also hate your mom for what she's doing to you. Yes. So how are those thoughts and fantasies colliding together? Because we know that that happens. Mm -hmm. um, 
How are they colliding together in your head? And colliding together in my head when, there, when she was just laying down there, she wasn't. She was more of a sex object than a than a mother, and more of the fantasies of having sex with her, and nothing to have and a killer. Two different uh, things when she was always. Dr. Jekyll Clyde, when she's down there, she's a sex fantasy, sex object. When she's up there uh, trying to get me to read, and she's uh, uh, the other side of uh, something, to, something I hated. I loved the part of her being a sex object, but I didn't like the part of her being the mother and uh, working with me as trying to help me in reading and and I like the sex part better than I like the the mother that was always trying to hurt uh, be little me and because uh, I wasn't uh, I didn't really think I had a, a urge to kill her I just wanted her to stop and um, what did you want to do to her? What did I want to do with her? Uh, t just to have her stop and uh, let, me, let me alone. Um, uh, angry at uh, her for uh, pushing and pushing and pushing on me to to remember, and I just couldn't remember, and I just wanted her to stop. Uh, but she didn't. But she didn't know. She didn't stop. Uh, but how would you do it? What did you think in your head about how you would do it? That's that's what we're trying to get at. When did you first think about treating your mom violently to get what you wanted her to do? Probably in fourth grade. Okay, there we go. Fourth. Fourth, fourth, fifth, and sixth was probably up to that grade. And what, what was in your mind that you wanted to do to get her to treat you a certain way? What did you want to do to your mom here? Uh, I wanted her to um, stop um, being angry at me for not knowing how to... Uh, but she wasn't stopping. No, she wasn't stopping. Was she? No. She kept picking at you, she picking. belittling you. Mm -hmm. Embarrassing you. I mean, that was pretty clear from yesterday. Mm -hmm. It happened in school too, so I had. So what? Did, what was your way of retaliating against her in your mind? What, what were you thinking to do to your mom? Um, I don't know. If I was thinking of uh, hurting her. I just wanted her to stop and. Uh... Ridgeway always responds the same way. He wanted his mother to stop and to leave him alone. In his mind, he was like an animal being pressed into a corner, and his only option was to strike out. While the height of Ridgway's killing spree occurred during the 80s and 90s, it is believed that he was responsible for deaths as late as 2001. On November 30, 2001, he was arrested for the murders of four women whose cases were linked to him through DNA profiling evidence. On December 18, 2003, King County Superior Court Judge Richard Jones sentenced Ridgway to 48 life sentences with no possibility of parole and one life sentence to be served consecutively. Tampering with evidence earned him an additional 10 years for each of the 48 victims, totaling 480 years on top of the consecutive life sentences.